Hello YouTubers, this is Average Joe here, back once again with another Kubota BX 1870 snowplow video. You can see we have significant snow. It is topped with sleet as well as freezing rain, so it's a very heavy snow. This is probably the heaviest snow that we've had yet this season here in Pennsylvania. Um, this is all due to winter storm Harper. So I do put the tractor into low range because I know that I'm going to be pushing a considerable amount of weight. And as you can see, I get partway down the driveway and I pause for a moment. That's because I'm losing traction. I make the mistake of lifting the blade. It doesn't seem like a mistake at this point, but unfortunately, as soon as I go out of the camera view, I end up getting stuck on the roadway. So I end up having the entire tractor stuck. And at that point, I have no choice but to bring out the Honda. And I obviously edited out the time gap there just to save you a little bit of time. And I went ahead and got out the Honda so that that way I could go ahead and, and clear the way for the Kubota. So I'm going to just show you a little bit of this. Um, first of all, the Honda has been a great snowblower. Once again, it's a track model. It's an HS928. Uh, I, I would recommend you check out my other videos that demonstrate the capability of this snowblower. I've had this snowblower longer than I've had my Kubota. Um, hands down, depending on snowfall amounts, there are just times where the snowblower is better. Uh, I can't see j the justification in purchasing a snowblower for the rear of my Kubota. Uh, it might be a little bit easier, but the added expense when I already have a high-quality Honda snowblower in my mind is essentially a waste of money, at least at this point. But it all depends on the snowfall. So what would I do again to make it so that I didn't get stuck? First of all, I would have kept the Honda snowblower in the garage and made room for it just so I didn't have to go to my backyard and get that out from the shed because even that takes time. And obviously I edited that part out, but it's, it's time. It's a time factor. Secondly, I should have started off by just making a path wide enough for the snowblower, excuse me, for the tractor with a snowplow. And then if I would have maintained traction, I could have just taken a small piece each time and I shouldn't have had any issues then. You can see there that I'm just going to keep snow blowing the driveway to make it passable for the tractor. So I'll show you a little bit of that footage. I am editing out the time it takes me to turn around as I get down towards the roadway. I should have changed my camera angle so you could have seen my tractor stuck, but since it was stuck partway on the road, all my thoughts were was to try to get it out of the way so that that way it's not blocking the traffic. I don't live on a really busy road, so that's not a big deal. But you can see the snowblower has no problem throwing the snow. Uh, one thing I did do on this, this particular um, instance here is I did put the snowblower in the ice position. So when I say the ice position, the older snowblowers have a foot pedal on the back and you can see that if you check out one of my, uh, check out the Honda snowblower oil change video and you actually have three positions. You have a transport, you have just the standard position which is taking it off the surface and then you have what's called like an ice position or a digging position where the actual auger is aimed down towards the surface you're trying to blow in an attempt to try to chew up all of the hard ice and packed snow that's there. So that's what I was using in this case. So I am fighting the blower a little bit. I'm a big fan of letting the machine do the work. But the reason why I'm fighting it is with that in the down position, especially as I'm coming up my driveway, it's a little bit harder. It does want to spin. Without doubt, tracks are the way to go when you have deep snow or you have packed down snow. The tracks just give you so much more traction. You don't have the spinning and the slipping that you would encounter with a wheeled snow blower. So you can see here it's blowing that snow without a problem. So at this point then, I'm going to go ahead and just park the snowblower for now. Since I finally got the tractor unstuck, I'm going to go ahead and start plowing once again, and I'll show you that footage. Um, again, there's options that I could use to improve my traction. I mean, the first one is keep in mind that I have turf tires on this machine. Um, if I change to the ag tires, there's no doubt that I would get more traction than what I have right now. Uh, another option would be to put tire chains on there as well. My biggest dilemma, my biggest holdup in installing chains on this is just the notion that I don't get snows like this that often. So the added expense is not something I really want to encounter. But if I did buy chains for it, I have no doubt that it would improve my traction. Um, Obviously, I'm a bigger person, so that does give me a little bit of additional weight over the, the rear wheels. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the tractor is doing a great job for the amount of snow that's there. 
it really just comes down to being smart enough to taking only a portion of the snow. And you can see that's what I'm doing. I'm not even worried about angling it. I'm just worried about moving the snow off of the driveway and trying to make sure that I don't take too much for the tractor's um, amount of power that it has and basically for the size of equipment that I have. Remember, just because you have a machine that has a 60 inch snow blade on it, it does not mean that you need to take 60 inches worth of snow at once. Yes, on the first pass, you don't have a choice. You're going to be taking the whole 60 inches worth of snow, and that's what makes it so difficult and so challenging if you have a very deep snow. But from that point forward, you control how much you have to take. The same is true with the snowblower. If you can get that first pass made with the snowblower, you don't have to take the entire width of the snowblower. And that's really the way you handle um, a snowfall amount that, that's higher than the capacity of your machine. I mean, you can see as I'm plowing, it's still moving a considerable amount of snow, but I'm not taking that snow head on in terms of taking a whole 60 inch blade width. I'm allowing the snow to obviously flow over. I'm taking small portions of it. Am I concerned about the extra, the excess that's coming off? No, because my intent is I'm going to go back through and clean that up. You really can't help that, especially on this big of a snowfall. The idea is to get the heavy amounts of snow, the bulk of the snow out of the way, and then cleaning up is not a big deal. I find that going back through like I'm doing now and cleaning up what's left behind helps out because if you get too much of that there, then you result in the scenario once again of it being packed down. So if you've watched my other video that I did on how to plow snow, you know that I don't take mine the whole way down to the pavement that often, down to the cement, because I have my skid shoes set. So my skid shoes are set down in order to bring my blade up so that I don't end up hitting it off of the raised concrete, some of the other areas. So you can see that I'm just going to keep taking partial amounts and using the tractor to, to move the heavier stuff. But I always try to clean it up. Sometimes I do clean up more than I need to as I'm making those excessive passes there, or successive passes rather. But again, it's all about efficiency as well as not overworking the equipment. If I get this stuck again, I'm completely wasting my time because now I have to go back to the snowblower. So it's better to go slow and steady, take your time, not to exceed the capacity of your equipment, and do what you can do. Remember, the machine is still doing the work. If I had to go through and actually use a shovel and shovel all of this, I guarantee that it would take me four hours because of how heavy the snow was. So you can just see that with the, the bulk of snow that's coming off of there. So that's just something to keep in mind. The other thing I did differently is I did move my truck out of the way. Normally that's parked in front of the bay where my tractor is. And I typically will just get up after a big snowfall, start it up, move it out of the way. But my original intent was to keep going out periodically throughout this snowfall because they were forecasting for Winter Storm Harper to be very, very long in duration. So, I mean, even a 24-hour storm, I mean, getting continuous snow, that's enough. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to try to keep it from backing up, but then I never went back outside. I decided I'd be okay the next day. And it's a trade-off. So then I ended up having to get the snow blower. So it really comes down to preference. But my thing is, I would much rather reduce the frequency of times that I have to plow, um, if possible, and just do things all at once, especially when I know a storm is, is slated to last for a day. But if if I could have if I had the time or if I would have been more persistent, I could have went out and kept up with it. Yes, I'd have been out there plowing more, but I wouldn't have been moving nearly the same amount of snow at the same time as I'm doing in this particular video. So, and the other thing I want to mention to you is in this video, I did have my headlights and my four ways on, which you should always do that. I mean, for safety, I am crossing a road, even though it's not busy, even though it's full daylight. It's great to have the headlights on so that other drivers can actually see you. Something else to keep in mind, too, is that before any major winter storm, you want to make sure that you have an adequate fuel supply. Um, myself, I make sure that I have an adequate supply of diesel fuel as well as gasoline. Uh, I make sure that both of my vehicles, the, the fuel tanks are topped off, just because you never know. Um, one of the worst things you can have happen is, is to run out of fuel in the middle of trying to clear snow, because in some instances, you may not be able to get out or get out easily 
without the snow being cleared. So then you have that dilemma of, okay, I don't have any fuel to continue clearing my driveway, and now I have to try to fight to get out of my driveway to go get fuel to keep clearing my driveway, and it just results in a mess. Um, now, one of the things that typically does not happen but is happening in this, this storm is right after this storm is done, we are slated to have um, a major cold front come through. We're talking negative 15 wind chill. So it's already been dropping as I'm actually plowing because you're going to notice that I'm bundled up so much. Um, I actually have on L.L. Bean snow pants and an L.L. Bean winter coat. I highly recommend those um, two pieces. Literally, the wind cannot rip through you. So if you're wondering, wow, he's really bundled up, it must be extremely cold there. It is extremely cold. And when you're out working, especially with the winds blowing, it makes it seem even colder. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, also make sure that you subscribe. That's the best thing that you can do for me because if you don't already know, YouTube has changed their monetization policies and they are now requiring that in order for a channel to have monetization, you must have a minimum of 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the last 12 months. So I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the thumbs up. I appreciate um, any new subscribers we can pick up on this. Thank you to all my current subscribers. Please make sure you comment below if there's something specific that you'd like to see. I'll try to accommodate that request. And don't forget, if you want a quick tour, or I should say a quick drive-through of the town of Crescent, Pennsylvania, following Winter Storm Harper, make sure you check out my other video. I'll place a link to that in this video. Have a great day, and make sure if you're in the Winter Storm right now, you stay safe out there.